Hey guys, I will be making a second more business oriented video on my other channel Gutterless, but I wanted to make a video, a lot of you are younger and many of you actually are my age. And I wanted to explain why I don't donate to other YouTubers. I live in one of the poorest places in America. Humble is where I live and my office is in Aldine. Aldine, we have a 37% poverty rate. The median income for a family of five, yes, a family of five, is under $35,000 a year. And where I live is a very nice neighborhood called Fall Creek. My home is rather, it's a good home. And there's actually a video of my home somewhere on YouTube on this channel. Because it's a good neighborhood, we get a lot of dogs being dumped and I help them as, as soon as I'm done helping one of them, there's another dog that needs help. I chose to live where I live because I could make the most impact with the resources I had. I could have lived in Galleria, which is where I lived previously, but you know, Galleria is expensive. I was dating a model at the time that was expensive. I'd actually rather help stray dogs like this. You can see that she's been outside in the sun for a long time. She has fleas and ticks. This is the dog that I posted about previously. She has a place to stay. Uh, I, we found her during a tropical storm. And I'm very glad that we did because you can tell she's very wet. Now, I want to show you some pictures of the area I live in. This is the mall, uh, the mall that my store originally was at. So we moved. Uh, part of the reason that I couldn't give you a location was we had to move. This is a mall called Greenpoint Mall. It is otherwise known as Gunpoint. And it, I got a lease for a dollar a square foot, which you might be like, oh, that's ridiculously low for a mall until you actually saw the mall. The mall is empty all the time. And honestly, I did not feel safe putting our MacBooks in the mall. So we found a new location that will explain some, I'll explain that ordeal a little later, but most of our sales are online anyway. So we're fine. I wanted really to reach out to you guys and make it very clear what my philosophy is. My philosophy is very simple, is get strong and give back. So if you are weak, you cannot give back and you should not give back. You should look out for yourself and you should build yourself up either skills or a better job or, you know, I say these, I say this and I know it's difficult. It's not as easy as snapping your finger and now you're promoted and you make twice as much money. It's difficult, but in the end it's worth it. My goal, you might think this is insane, but my goal in 2018 was not to foster any dogs. I'm up to two dogs and I have a failed adoption on a cat right now. I was doing pretty well until recently and there could be a fourth dog or a third dog here, a four foster. In 2017, I spent almost $5,000 on medical bills, supplies, and all of that good stuff on nine foster animals, three failed adoptions. So a failed adoption doesn't sound as bad as, it is not as bad as it sounds. It means when you're a foster parent and you decide to keep the animal. But there's many reasons, like the two ferrets are, they count as two failed adoptions on my record, but honestly, no one wanted to adopt a ferret. So what option did I have? Like I had to just, at one point they were there for six months and I was trying to foster them out, but there was no hope. So this is where I, this is where the store was. Um, this is the luncheon place that we used to eat at, China One Number Four. It is a Chinese restaurant run by completely by Spanish speakers, and there were no Chinese people at this restaurant at all. So again, that's why you have the 
uh, Sodar Gratis. Um, here are the stores next to my store, and they're very, you know, plain, and the people are super nice. Like, I like the store owners, but talking to them, they would not recommend, you know, they're, they are already there, and they told me that we should move out when we could. Uh, you see the signage. Um, I should take some pictures of the actual store, but I think I signed a contract where I could not. I'll just so I went to the mall today with my intern, and I really wanted to show him like, hey, this is what the store used to look like, and this is a new store today. This is the AMC, which should be really busy at this time of day. Uh, it should be you know crowded, and on the sides there should be other stores, but it's so dead. And the population has such a low income that they can't afford to go to the movies. You might think that's insane, but the reason I'm showing you these stores with the, you know, the plastic trucks and the merchandise and the fake backpacks and everyone selling counterfeit materials here. And the store is called Toys with a Z. And my cat is called Boots with a Z. I mean... Here is the emptiness, um, so it is GPM. Uh, you can kind of make up the phone number if you want to call them for that dollar lease. It's a, do a dollar a square foot, month to month. That's insane, right? For so then That's why I got it, because I wanted to get a really big space. But, you know, obviously it's cheap for a reason. And this is the emptiness. Okay, so back to my opinion of the community is there's takers and there's givers and you cannot you shouldn't give if you're not strong enough um, strong enough either mentally physically emotionally you need to build yourself up and there's no better reward than being in my case you know i like animals so I'll, I'll just speak about my case there's no better reward for me than fostering an animal and seeing it go to a good home there are plenty of animals out there. Uh, they get dumped at my neighborhood all the time. And it's very annoying because I just, you know, we just had one and now another one got dumped. And it's like, wow, this could continue forever. And that's why my New Year's resolution was not to foster dogs because that's what happened. Uh, from Hurricane Harvey on, I had nine foster animals. Uh, that's insane. Uh, that is pretty insane. And at one time, I had seven of them at the same time. I chose to live here in one of the poorest areas in the U.S. Um, so you might, in a different country, you might be, wow, this is a great income. Uh, that's the median family income. Okay, and the median family income is under 35000 for Aldine and under thirty, I think it's seven for Humble, which is where I live. So that's where I live, and then where I had my office was Aldine. You you got to realize that you can do a lot of good. I was doing some immigration. I was doing some legal stuff, just advice, because people need it. Uh, people need it, and it's not like they can get it. They will have to pay to get actual advice. So I just wanted to share this piece of my life with you and maybe it helps explain why I am so, I guess, aggressive and salty and people where I live have it really bad. And, you know, flooding and it's very, the animals really get to me. I mean, I, I don't want to say I don't care about the people, but like, you know, I foster the animals first, right? Life is really tough. It's not as simple as asking for donations, receiving donations, and then doing it over and over again. That's a very, very, um, that's not a realistic way to look at it, in my opinion. And all of these are my opinions, but I'm just going to go straight to the point now. There are people who are struggling to make it. I see them every day. When I drive my car, I see them walking in the middle of nowhere in a hundred degree heat. It's like, where are they walking to? And why don't they have a car? Why didn't they take a bus? 
at some point you don't even question this anymore because it just becomes so commonplace. I see a mall. This is a mall. This is our mall. And the mall has been renamed Gunpoint because people get shot there all the time. And I've seen families and I, you, a lot of you will ask and criticize that I hire gas station cashiers. I hire um, people with, I think, I would say financial problems and, and or personal issues. But I take a chance on people. I believe in that. I truly, in the my bottom of my heart, I really believe that you should take a chance on people. And you don't want to give them charity, but you want to give them the ability to work themselves out of the situation. If someone receives donation after donation after donation, they're going to get complacent, they're going to get lazy, and they're going to get more handouts. And the economic side, yeah, I mean, does it make sense? If I knew, let's say that I knew I would get bailed out by either my patrons or my... Um, or the government, the U.S. government would bail me out from bankruptcy. Maybe I don't go on a walk. Maybe I don't eat healthier. Maybe I don't exercise on a regular because I know that it will be fine either way. This is going to sound very critical and very harsh, and I don't mean it with any spite or malice. It's just so different from the way I think about stuff. Um, it, it's so night and day. I want to help people. I want to help animals. To do that, I need to be as strong as I can be. I need to make as much money as I can make. Because then I can funnel that money back into the community. This is a community that is dirt poor. I love it to death. And sometimes I'll complain about it, especially on my other channel. I think my description of my other channel is, Hi, my name is Tony and I live in one of the poorest places in the U.S. And I, through, you know, struggling and hard work, I have made a home of this place. Do good, be good, create change. And the only way you can do that, I'll tell you a story of an interviewee that we had uh, two years ago. It was a guy, and he told a very sad story about how he was pretty broke. He drove a really poor car, um, and he was telling the story of how his wife didn't want uh, his wife divorced him because he was too poor, and he had he was trying to make his own agency. We had Isabella at the time, and Isabella and I talked about it. And he his goal was to have open a soup kitchen for the poor because he ate a soup kitchen. That's where he eats. If that is your goal, you need to make money, right? You need to build up your agency. You can't be lazy about. The things that you're lazy about. If you want to do good, get strong. Work extra hours. Like it's so insane to me where I think that, and I truly believe, if you want to be a positive impact on any community, you have to sacrifice. You have to give. People who take are not positive impacts on a community. If it was 100 takers, the community would be... If you were stuck in the island and all 100 people were taking and taking and taking, and that's all they did from the island, you would be screwed real fast. But those 100 people were givers, and they shared, and they worked together, and they helped each other. You might even survive for a long time. When I look at the magic community, it sickens me a little bit about how many people think the takers are actually givers. And that's my point. Is they put these takers on a pedestal and then they criticize the givers. Like we have this completely backwards in the magic community. And this community I know the police, they're really nice to me. I know the firefighters, they're super nice to me. I always send them a good gift. Uh, the trash people, I know them as well. Like when I give back to this community, the dogs, like I still check up. I still get messages. Like each month, I'll get probably five to 10 messages from uh, foster owners about like how the dog is doing or the cat. 
And that makes me feel good because that makes me feel appreciated because I gave. And givers should be highlighted, not takers. I'm, I can get more detail about how people are taking. Uh, you can take PR, you can take um, attention, you can take likes, you can, you know, when I look at the community out there, it, it just, it sickens me a little bit about how much these takers are taking and how people are encouraging to, them to take more. Maybe I'll get into a very nasty rant sometime later. But anyway, bye guys.